Hello and welcome back to Winchester News Online's coverage of the general election 2010. The South decides. It's been a frantic first hour of the show so far. Thank you very much for tuning in. The exit polls told us that the uh, Conservatives were doing well, the Lib Dems not so. The first result comes in. Of course, it had to be a Labour victory, but the result, down 12% the vote there for Labour. Uh, our analysts are turning around and saying that the result of this first seat is consistent with the exit polls, but if anything, the swing is slightly bigger to the Conservatives from Labour. Uh, nevertheless, Labour managed to hold on with a big majority there. They certainly will be delighted about that. But the other big news story, imagine this is going to roll on for uh, day after day, is these number of polling booths are apparently people have been locked outside of them because they haven't been able to get in and vote police being called it's a uh, it's really quite nice actually in a little way to see sort of politics in this country having a queue of people outside where normally at that time of night most people are getting into their oval team and settling in for a night with david dimbleby or graham bell take your pick whichever one you like well let's go over to our uh, our outside broadcast reporters for more details on all, all, all on all how the different parties are getting on I have the first result of the night for you here. The Labour vote in Sunderland and Hooton has held up. That means Labour has won the first seat of the night. Bridget Phillipson won with 19,135 seats, but the Tories have gained an 8.4% swing. This will be a big blow to Gordon Brown early on. Labour's deputy leader, Harriet Harman, has come out fighting, though, and said the country hasn't turned overwhelmingly towards the Conservatives. Here in our region, though, it's far too early to give you any results, but from our own opinion poll across the South, it shows that Labour's vote has collapsed to around 10%, and it seems the wrangling has begun to secure backing of the Lib Dems if we do indeed go into a hung Parliament. The Home Secretary, Alan Johnson, has come out fighting and said, we are not giving up just on the back of an exit poll. I have no problem at all with joining the Lib Dems in a hung parliament. I can't see the Tories doing a deal with the Lib Dems, but I can see us doing a deal. We have a lot in common and we can come to an agreement on this. And now we cross back over to Joey for the latest on the Conservatives. While the Sunderland South and Hearing votes would have disappointed Cameron slightly, he wouldn't have been expecting too much movement there, surely they were expecting Labour to take that seat and the vote proves that uh, Brown's stronghold has held firm there. Tories picking up 8,147 votes, they've got 21% of that, but they have gained an 8.4 swing as we've heard. Of course they'll be more interested in the vote coming in at Whitney which is coming in at 3am and we will be covering that live. So that's all really the news we've got for you in the Tory camp. So we're going to hand over now to the Liberal Democrat correspondent, James Fraser. Well, what is happening with the Liberal Democrats? At one point during this campaign, they were in front in all of the polls, and their leader, Nick Clegg, was far more confident than the, the great Sir Winston Churchill. But the exit poll shows them performing poorly, and all of the talk is of a hung parliament. However, Really remarkably, in our student exit polls from the universities of Winchester, Kingston and Buckingham seem to suggest that the Liberal Democrats have snapped up a large amount of the student vote. The thing about universities is that they are big blocks of voters away from home. So here in prosperous Winchester, for example, there are students from all around the country so they can vote in a totally different way to the population as a whole. The Liberals have lost a 1% vote swing in Sunderland South and Hewton only gaining 5,292 votes as the first results of the evening begin to roll in. Now back over to Josh Duffy for a roundup of the latest news from all of the other parties. Well, it's all about UKIP at the moment. Just hearing they lost out to Halton and Sunderland South, failing to dent Labour's hold, and it only gets worse, I'm afraid. Uh, as you've already heard from our guys in the studio, UKIP are going to be slaughtered in Buckingham if, if, uh, if our exit polls are in any way correct. Now, despite no Tory or Labour standing there, UKIP still only predicted to get 20% of the votes, again, if our polls are right. Now, UKIP even said that Buckingham, uh, Buckingham needs a voice, not a speaker and that they would take Perko on and defeat him. Now, John Perko, of course, being very much a hate figure uh, on Tory right with UKIP for his strong pro-European views. And we've also heard from our reporter, Glenn, in Eastleigh, who says that UKIP will hope to overtake Labour, but early signs aren't promising. So it's not a great start for uh, UKIP. But, um, and we have not, we've not got much news on the Green Party, but uh, come back in an hour and hopefully we'll have more. So it's back to you guys in the studio.
Cheers, Joss. Thank you very much for that indeed. Keep us all up to date with all the, all the parties and all the others. It's fantastic stuff. Paddy Ashdown, former leader of the Liberal Democrats, says exit polls are almost always inaccurate. He says this doesn't take into account the postal votes and they do account for 25% of the vote in my old constituency. Another former Labour leader says that the figure for the Lib Dem is almost certainly wrong. This is Neil Killick, ladies and gentlemen. He'll tell you if it's wrong or not. I'm delighted to say Natalie, Lib Dem supporter has joined us in the studio. Obviously, not great nationally for you guys at the moment, but maybe looking strong for you in Winchester, hopefully. Yeah, it's looking better here. Very much. Well, it's got to be looking better. I mean, the student poll that we have come out with, I believe it was 62% of the vote of students going for Liberal Democrats. We must be pleased. Martin Todd must be pleased he's managed to hold on to the student vote there. I think so. I think it's a worry, the polls in the rest of the country. We've just got to hold on tight and see what happens. Tom, our political editor, also joins us in the uh, studio. Hi, Tom, the Liberal Democrats, they came in and they, they, their big point to students when they're voting is tuition fees. Uh, the fact they want to scrap them, the fact that they believe it's not a great thing. I'm just curious to see how this could happen, really. Now, I would argue that Nick Clegg has... Nick, Nick Clegg, excuse me there, has misled a lot of students in a way. He's got the student vote, but what people don't know is that this scrapping of tuition fees will take six years to be exacted. Um, the price will be around £7.5 to the economy. And you have to say, is it realistic that uh, tuition fees will be completely scrapped? Uh, university fees at the moment are a big big thing for our economy. More people are going to university than ever before. Yes, maybe they should be capped, but Nick Clegg's proposals, in my honest opinion, are completely unrealistic. Well, let's ask the economics correspondent and expert we have in the studio, Neil Marriott. Neil, um, are, they un are they unrealistic? In the w I mean, we've now had top-up fees for about 2001, I seem to remember they came in. Is it now possible to reverse that trend? I don't think so. I mean, if anything, the trend's going to go the other way with uh, the, the, the cap being lifted. Um, that's certainly what the, the Tories will do, I think, if they come in. I can't see any other option for them. Uh, that's going to favour some universities and other universities are going to suffer. Uh, but I, I, I would agree with Tom, I don't think there's anything here uh, for students to really vote in favour of. And William Sherwood, Head of Politics here at the University of Winchester, I mean, is this just the ultimate vote-getting sort of thing, the big headline thing that their party needs? Well, scrap tuition fees, hopefully every student in the country goes, I yeah. like that idea, let's go with it. There's, there's a certain sense of cynicism, I think, about something along those lines, and Kelly Nick Clegg was looking for the youth vote. Uh, I don't think I agree with, with colleagues here that there's any likelihood that student fees are going, are going to be scrapped. I think what we'll find with review, which all the parties are rather hoping will decide later in the year, uh, to make it a non-party political issue, will say that the, there's no reason why the cap should remain. In fact, it should really be increased. And I think that's almost certainly what will happen. So this, uh, this, it may have been a vote gain uh, for Nick Clegg. I don't suspect it's actually a, a, a hugely significant one if it was, and I don't think it's something which is ever at all realistic as policy. I You're think, not even yeah, happy yeah, then, yeah. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that the, what, what the government will do is they won't back this uh, tuition fee rise. The, the chances are that will have to be at a commercial rate. And so that's going to be even more bad news for students. I'm delighted to say we're going to go pass over to one of our outside broadcast units right now. We're going up to Buckingham, the constituency where Nigel Farage obviously had his plane crash earlier today, and John Burko, the speaker, was standing. Kayleigh, let's go over to Buckingham. Here we go to Shana Ray in Buckingham. How are things looking there? Hello and good evening, Winchester, on a clear and chilly night in the heart of England. This is Shauna Ray reporting from the main central polling station in Buckingham Town Centre. First, the real surprising news in our exit poll, the monster raving loony party polled a massive 3% among voters responding to our poll. But more seriously, it seems clear from our snapshot poll that City MP and Common Speaker John Burko has comprehensively beaten off frenzy challenge of UKIP's Nigel Forage. There doesn't even seem to have been an element of sympathy voting for Farage following the narrow escape in an airplane crash earlier today. Burkhal polled Farage by 5 to 1 to save his speakership. None of the other 10 independent candidates attracted any degree of support, including John Stevens, who was being backed by Man in White and cleanup campaigner Martin Bell. Thanks, Shana. That's very interesting stuff. Thank you. Can we go back to Graham? Thank you very much indeed. I told you the technology will work. I told you, stick around with us, the technology will work and it will be perfectly fine. That was fantastic stuff there from Buckingham. It really has been an incredible, just keeping up with that story, I mean, that's really going to be covering the papers tomorrow. The Nigel Farage plane crash really doing us...